three friends were still in Jerusalem, it seems that the people were tired of paying tribute to the king of Babylon, the country next to ours. So we stopped paying taxes, which was fine with us, but not so good for the king next door. We didn't know too much about this next door neighbor, except that his name was Nebuchadnezzar, and he had done great things for his country. And we also heard that he had a very bad temper. What do you mean they aren't going to pay the tax anymore? Of course they're going to pay it. They must pay it. What makes them think they can stop paying the tax just because they don't like it? Well, we'll see who doesn't pay taxes. You get my horse, you get my army, and you get my latte. And you two get out of my way. We are going to Judah. Thank you. Nebuchadnezzar came and there was a terrible battle. We were all taken prisoner and had to go live in Babylon.
palace garden to letting us have the food we were taught to eat at home. Then later, when we were called before the king, he said that we were the strongest and wisest of all the boys he captured. He was very pleased with us. Yay! Yay! Which just goes to show, it pays to remember what you learn at home.
full palace near the farm market. As a last resort, they sent someone to ask me if I could help. Well, I'd interpreted dreams, but I'd never been asked to tell someone what they dreamed, so I went to my friends. We talked about dreams for a long time. Then we prayed. Prayed that our God would tell us what the king's dream was and what it meant. forgets about you when you're old and forgetful. Why, if I could remember the dream myself, I would <coughs> keep them. Oh, I'll have their heads. I'll, I'll, oh, what? Who are you? I'm Daniel, one of the captives from Judah. Who? I, oh, yes, I remember you. Uh, what do you want? I've come to tell you your dream. You've what? I've come to tell you your dream. Your wise men couldn't possibly answer your questions. Neither can I, but the God my friends and I worship can. Oh, what does this God of yours tell you? 
It told me about your dream, and this is how it went. You dreamed of a large statue made of gold and silver and brass and iron and clay. Oh, yes, I'm beginning to remember it now. But there was more. Tell me the rest! Then a big stone broke the feet of the statue, and it scattered into a thousand pieces. And then the stone changed into a mountain covering the whole land. Ah, yes, I remember everything now. <laughs> well, you've answered the hardest question, but let me see if you can uh, tell me what it means. It's a prediction of the future. You are a good king. You are the golden statue. But other kingdoms that will follow will not be as good. There will be some like silver, some like brass, some like iron, and some like clay. Then God will set up a new kingdom that will not be destroyed, but will be like a mountain covering the whole land and last forever. Oh. You say your God told this to you? Yes. Well, Daniel, you and your friends will have high places in my government. In fact, I will even spare the wise men. How do you like that? In fact, I'm going to make a law. Yes, I'm going to make a decree that all my people will know about your God. This is my decree. the one true God, and his law says, Do, do not, not worship, worship idols. It was a difficult decision, but we knew what we had to do.
You might have guessed it. It didn't take long before somebody tattled to the king. Oh, most great and wonderful king. Did you know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not bowing down to your golden image? Well, the king didn't know, so he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come before him. Now, boys, is it true that you were not bowing down to my image? Now, don't answer too quickly. I want to be fair. If you bow down now, I will forgive you, and everything will be fine. Okay? <laughs> But if you don't, I will throw you into the furnace, and there is no God that will be able to save you. The boys just looked at the king and said, No, we will not worship your idol. What? You refuse? So this is how you repay my kindness. Heat the furnace seven times harder than before. Tie those boys into nuts tightly, show them no mercy, and throw them into the furnace. So they heated the furnace and threw them in. And then, well, then something very strange began to happen. Nebuchadnezzar bent low to get a good look inside the furnace. And then he bent lower to get a better look because he couldn't believe what he saw. It isn't hot.
Ishak, Abednego, come out of that furnace! Please. And you know what? They did. They marched right up to the king. I take it back. Everything I said about your God not being able to save you, he is, clearly. Oh, I've been a foolish king. I've, I've let my anger run away with me. But I won't do that again, because now I'll, I'll make a law, yes, a decree, that no man is ever to say anything against your God, or I'll, 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 I will just promote you to high positions in the land of Babylon. Now, uh, let us all remember that there is but one true God, and we are to be praising him with everything we have. Or, or I'll, 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 I, I'll try to remember my promise. Now let us all praise God. <laughs> <laughs>